I'm Emily C. Boonrung and I'm here to show you how to make bone broth with beef bones. I like making bone broth because it's so essential for the human body and it's good for your immune system. It contains a lot of minerals that the body can easily absorb like calcium, phosphorus, magnesium, and there's cartilage and tendons in it which actually has a lot of glucosamine and helps arthritis and joint pain. The ingredients you're going to need are grass-fed beef bones, which I purchased from our half cow that we got last year from Five Bar Beef, thank you very much, and vinegar. Now you can use any kind of vinegar. I have apple cider vinegar here today, and why vinegar? Well, it's to help extract calcium out of the bones. You're also going to need a pot with water in it and a pan to roast the bones and bring the flavor out. So, let's get started. The first step is to blanch the bones. The reason why we're blanching it first is to get all the impurities and funky stuff out of it. So we're just going to place it in a pot of cold water. I have cold water in here already. I'm just gonna put all these beautiful grass-fed beef bones, look how big that is, in the pot. We're gonna turn on the stove and we're gonna bring it to an aggressive simmer for about 20 minutes. And while that's going, you're gonna preheat the oven to 450. I know that sounds high, but we really wanna get the bones brown. So the water has began to boil and you can see all that scum, the impurities that have come off the bones. So I'm just going to skim it. We are just going to completely take out the bones, but I don't want this to stay attached to the bones when you roast it. So I'm going to skim it. I have my skimmer here with a bowl of water. I learned that trick in culinary school. We're still going to continue to keep this at an aggressive simmer for about 15 more minutes. Okay, so that was 20 minutes. You can see I try to skim as much of the impurities as I can. And an easy way to drain it is by just taking the bones out directly versus just dumping it in a colander. All right, here are the bones. Nice and clean. I've got the oven preheated to 450 degrees. We're gonna pop in the beef bones. I'm gonna check in on it. In 15 minutes, if it hasn't gotten brown enough, I'm going to leave it in a little longer. So I put half the bones in one crock pot, and I'm going to put the other half in my second crock pot. If you only have one crock pot, that's fine. I just like to stretch out the broth so it lasts for at least a week, especially between me and Cody drinking it. Now I'm going to be filling it up with reverse osmosis water. Ideally, you want to use Good water, spring water, reverse osmosis. Just make sure it's not tapped because remember, you're gonna be drinking this. So I'm going to fill it up to cover the bones. And you can also flavor this if you want. You can throw an onion in there, carrots, peppercorns, bay leaf, garlic. Now don't forget to add the vinegar, just a splash of it. Got my second crock pot here. Cover it. Make sure, set it on low for 10 hours. And then after those 10 hours are up, I'm actually going to set it on low again for another 10 hours. So it's gonna be brewing for 20 hours total on low heat. If you don't have a crock pot, you can also put it on the stove in a stock pot and just leave it on the stove on low, covered for at least 12 hours. The longer, the better. And with beef bones, it's okay to leave it on for so long because they're really thick bones versus chicken bones where you would probably only need two to three hours or else everything is just, the bones are just going to disintegrate. It's the next day. It's been about over 20 hours after the slow cooker finished on low for 10 hours I put it for another 10 hours so it brewed a little bit longer now I want to show you the difference with I mean the same bag of bones I split them and you can see how much fattier this one is versus the other one 
And that's okay, because we are going to be skimming the fat. The last time I made this, I did not skim the fat and it was a little heavy. It was really rich and I couldn't even finish a glass. I took a few sips. So this time I'm going to be skimming it. All you need to do is grab a bowl, skim the top part, try to get as much fat as you can without the liquid. You can still keep the fat and add it to your dog's food, which is what I'm going to do. I'm going to sprinkle it in for my dogs. You can add it to anything to add a little bit of flavor. If you're making a little bit of rice, add a little bit of fat to it. Another way to get a lot of the fat out is by taking this out completely, let it cool down a little bit so it's not so hot putting it in the fridge, and then once that cools down and gets cold, all the fat is gonna come up and get a little more solid. So that's an easy way to get it out too. Or we're gonna do what I'm going to do today, which is just fill up these mason jars, pop it in the fridge, and then by the time I wanna have some and heat some up, there's gonna be some fat on there that I could just skim at the top of the jar. I love mason jars. Also, if you save your jars, like this Dr. Bronner's one of coconut oil, these are really cool to keep. I love the caps, the lids. We're finishing up, filling up this jar. And I haven't seasoned it yet. I like to season it when I'm about to drink it with Redmond Real Salt. I've got a strainer because I'm gonna pour the rest of the bone broth in. And I found that um, there could be little pieces of bone that broke off and I don't want to be biting or swallowing any of that. One crock pot filled up about two and a half 24 ounce mason jars. That's why I like to use two crock pots or if you don't have two crock pots, you could also use a big stock pot to get a lot of liquid out of your bones. So you can see how much fat is at the top. This isn't very much. You can always uh, skim it if you want and then use it for cooking or just keep it in your bone broth. So all this stuff, the gelatinous stuff, has some collagen, glucosamine, minerals in it, all good for your skin and your immune system. Isn't that beautiful stuff? Oh, tastes so clean. I know I didn't put any vegetables or onions or anything in it, but it just has this really clean taste. However, once I season it with some Redmond Real Salt, the salt is gonna bring out the flavor of the bone broth. Mm, so good, so tasty. One of the main reasons why I love making bone broth is because it's a cost-effective way to nourish your body. All you have to do is go to your local butcher or Whole Foods, get some grass-fed beef bones and some water. If you guys have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. Now I'm off to make another recipe. I'll see you guys later. Cheers.